This is the second installment about flux fields and sources of them. So in previous video, we uh, defined the concept of flux as a how much of a field is passing through a given surface. And we used this Greek letter. Um, we had the example field that we worked with. It's a gravitational field. And we had a, an example where we had a box near the surface of the Earth. And this just means that the gravitational field above the box is the same as below the box and the same as anywhere we're looking at. And then we argue that the flux going in through the top was equal to the flux going out of the bottom. Now, because of the orientation of the box and the orientation of the gravitational field, there's no flux of the field, there's no field entering the sides. So we only have to consider the top and the bottom. Since these two are equal and one is considered positive, that's the one coming out of the box, and one that's considered negative is the one going into the box, that meant that the net flux, the net gravitational flux, was equal to zero. Okay. So, in this video here, we're going to consider what happens when we include a source. And the source of gravitational field is mass, at least in a classical field theory of what we call Newtonian uh, physics, is the mass. Okay, so here we're going to again consider our box. I'm not going to draw it as a three dimensional, I'm just going to draw it two dimensional. We have the gravitational field. I'm not going to put a subscript E to indicate this is the gravitational field due to the Earth. And it's the same everywhere, and it's pointing straight down towards the Earth. But now what we're going to do now is we're going to put in a little source here. So this is a little mass particle. That mass particle is going to create its own little field. If it's a sphere, that just means that no matter where we're looking, it's going to be pointing towards the field can be pointing towards that little spherical object. Okay. And we're going to call that field T subscript M. All right. So we now look at what is the total flux here. It's going to be the flux due to the gravitational field due to the Earth plus the flux due to the gravitational field the mass. Now we already argued this one is zero, but what about this one here? Well we can see that no matter where we are on this box, this flux is going into the box. None of it is flowing out of the box. That meant that this part here is always going to be uh, adding up to not zero. So instead of having an equal sign here, I will say this is not equal to zero. And what it means is that if we take a closed surface, can I spell here? Uh, closed. Ha! Let's just erase it. All right, this is the one. Way. Has some liquid on it. All righty. So we have a closed surface. Um, we can then say that if no source within, no source inside, then the net flux is equal to zero. That's the case we had over here. Nothing inside the box. No source of, gravi of this gravitational field. If source of the field is inside that closed surface, then the net flux is not equal to zero. So we can use this uh, concept of a flux to evaluate whether there's a source inside or maybe some knowledge of the source inside. And this is uh, really stated in, so recall from last time, we had that the flux, the gravitational flux, 
through a closed surface. Remember, when we have closed surface, you put a little circle around the integral time. It does not mean we do integration differently. It just indicates that the in integral has to be completed over a closed surface, like a box. Uh, with the gravitation field dotted with this area element. Okay. So what uh, Gauss's law say? And this really comes from classical field, classical field theory. It goes over modern field theory will do this well, and but it's too too much in depth for this course to go into what it becomes. So we're gonna just state Gauss's law for gravity tells us that the the uh, net flux through a closed surface. And this is the gravitational flux. It's equal to negative 4 pi some constant g. This is the gravitational constant from Newton's law of gravity. Times the mass that's enclosed inside that closed surface. So with that in mind, we get a relationship where we take instead of flux expressed in terms of the field, I forgot the pi here. Don't can't forget the pi, even though sometimes in physics we just said pi equal to one. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's just a number anyway, right? Okay. So this is Gauss's law for gravity. I kind of put a box around it because what this here tells us is that here we have this source. And here we have the resulting field. Right. So what it tells us, if we know something about the mass, and not only that, but how maybe some sort of distribution, that's actually what we're going to see later on. But if we have a mass, and how the mass is distributed, we can calculate the field. And that is really cool. Uh, we will see some examples of that in how we deal with that in terms of the gravitational field. But where we're really going to use it is when we get into electric and magnetic fields. For electric fields, this mass becomes electrical charges instead. If we know something about the electrical charges and how they're distributed, we can calculate the electric field using Gauss's law. Uh, for the magnetic field, um, we don't have a source. So this one is going to look very different, or slightly different. This is going to be zero. But otherwise, uh, we have a similar Gauss's law for magnetic fields. So this is the, uh, the theory we need uh, in order to uh, proceed with the uh, flux field and source calculations. And uh, we'll take those in different videos.